the proposed redistricting plan. At this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our city manager, Mr. Warren Wood. Thank you, Mayor Gases. Tonight, just the workshop presentation on uh, the proposed um, uh, new districts for your ward uh, ward map, and uh, we you're not obligated to make a decision tonight. Um, that I will say that there were looking back at previous. Um, ward maps and the changes with the census there, was, there were fewer the ward boundaries changed less this time than what considerably than last time so um, it was just a lot of it was tweaking around the edges but, um, uh, but we can get into a discussion and, and decide what direction you want to head in if you were to settle on one um, I know that we're going to come back the consultants are going to come back with a interactive map that gives a little more resolution on your streets and whatnot. So, um, but with that, I'll turn it over to Deborah Stagner with Therrington Smith and she has uh, Blake Elliston uh, with her. Good evening, it's nice to be back in Hickory. Um, so the, the main event tonight is gonna to be Blake and his map. So I'll just sort of review with you where we are. We obviously have to redistrict to make sure that the population of each ward is substantially equal um, to comply with one person, one vote. We have the new census numbers and we can tell that your current districts, um, current wards do not meet that. Um, last time we were here, we reviewed the redistricting guidelines and we went through um, the, um, you know, the requirements of one person, one vote, uh, not diluting or over concentrating a minority um, voting strength to comply with the Voting Rights Act, um, not splitting census blocks. Those are the, the those are really the, the stable core of the redistricting principles. Um, and then we presented some uh, options for you all to consider. Um, trying, do you wanna keep the districts the same general configuration that they are now? Do you want to um, keep districts reasonably compact to the extent possible? Do you wanna consider incumbency and where you all live currently and, and not um, move an incumbent out of it, out of your ward, um, considering areas that might have potential growth in the future. And so you all decided on those uh, redistricting <coughs> criteria at a subsequent meeting and they were conveyed to Blake. Um, Blake has gone and, and you all have some maps there that he's going to walk you through. Um, so I'm gonna let him do that and explain the changes that he made. Um, I'm, and then we'll both be happy to answer any questions and I can talk a little bit more about the process after tonight. Um, you all will want to have a, need to have a public hearing on the maps before they're um, formally adopted. And so just depending on what kind of publicity you want to have about that, whether you want to um, have the public hearing and make a decision or you want to wait um, uh, until a subsequent meeting after the public hearing and make a decision and then adopt that resolution. So um, I'll answer some questions uh, now or at the end after you've had a chance to see the maps. I'll turn it over to Blake. And, and so along those lines, I don't want to be presumptuous. Obviously, you're not going to make a decision and I have to be a public hearing, but if, you're, if you were leaning towards one, and I will, I, as manager, I'm obligated to make a recommendation, so ultimately I will make a recommendation. Um, but we will have the public hearing at the second meeting in October is when that will be held as it stands right now, so. And, and just to, you know, to sort of set the stage, you can pick one tonight that you would prefer and put that forward as the map that will be presented at the public hearing or you can have both options available at the public hearing and get feedback on both of them. Um, or you can say to uh, us, uh, and to, specifically to Blake, you know, neither one of these are really exactly what we were hoping for and could you, know, could you look at something different or are there particular changes that you are um, interested in seeing? Thank you, Deborah. Good evening, Council. It's good to be here again. And um, if we can just jump to the next slide. Oh, I've got a, I've got a clicker here. That's right. And, and a laser pointer, even. So just this is, uh, we're going to review. This is actually an identical slide to one that I presented before, uh, the last time that, that I was here. And this, uh, on the left side, is the wards in their current configuration. 
the existing wards. And uh, in matching colors, the bar chart on the right shows the population. So the, the height of those bars indicates the population of the existing wards as measured in the 2020 census. So a snapshot from April of 2020. And uh, on that bar chart, you'll see a solid line, the, the horizontal lines near the top. The solid one in the middle indicates the ideal population. That's the total population <coughs> divided by the number of wards. And um, that is 7,248. And then within plus or minus 5% is that's the, 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 the acceptable range, the permissible range. And that's the, the dashed line below and the dotted line above. And you'll see that only wards two and three actually fall into that permissible range. And the reason I'm spending some time reviewing this, I think it, it's helpful to look at what the existing, sort of the existing lay of the land is, what, what our starting situation is. And when you see that the, the three wards that are below the permissible population range are <coughs> ward one here, which is right in the center and does not have any, uh, any current connection to the, the outer boundary of the, the corporate limits. And then also wards four and five, which are on the, the western side. Um, now, interestingly, two, wards two and three are in the acceptable range. Ward two is very close to the upper limit. And ward two only shares a boundary with ward six. And ward six is the, the biggest outlier. That's the one with the population that is most significantly uh, outside the permissible range. So um, when I was here last time, we were just, had very recently gotten the census numbers. I think I had a, a map from the Census Bureau and a map from the News and Observer, but this is a map that I made showing Catawba County. And this is a similar uh, color ramp or, or color shading to what you might have seen in other maps where the shade of green indicates growth and the shade of yellow into orange indicates reduction in population. So I purposely grayed out the parts of Catawba County um, that are not within the town, the, the city's corporate limits. And I did not include the, the Burke and Caldwell County pieces, but this is just to give a sense of, you can see that the majority of the area within the city limits, and this, by the way, the, the, um, the shapes here are tracts, census tracts, which tend to be about 4,000 people each. And um, as is consistent with the location of Ward 6, and uh, that being the area that had the highest population above the acceptable range, you can see this tract in here had growth over 20%. Uh, but the, most of the area in, in the city's corporate limits did experience growth. The area here to the southeast, um, at least those tracts, uh, had some some reduction, and again, the yellow might have just been it's it's zero from anywhere from zero percent to negative five percent. That could be a little bit, and in a, in a in an area like this, it could be that actually the areas within the city of Hickory grew slightly, but that tract as a whole had a decrease in population. So, but this is just to give uh, another reminder of the. Um, uneven distribution of population change, which is why we're doing this, and to give a, a sense of where uh, the, the growth that has to be adjusted for took place. Uh, just, again, revisiting this, uh, after having looked at that, I thought it might be helpful to then compare this back to our existing districts. And again, the, the basic task here is to bring the populations of wards one, four, and five up and bring six down, but because um, uh, three shares such a, a long border with those and, and the, the population of two, ward two is so high, so close to the limit, and is also expected to experience more annexation and growth based on my, my conversations with staff, um, you'll notice that changes get made to two in all of these options as well. This uh, might be a, a little bit of a uh, slide that makes you wonder why I drew something that looks like it has two wards. Um, in talking with staff and also just my own experience driving around and, and looking at the map, it, it does appear that Highway 127 is a significant divider. And so I was curious to see what fraction of the population is on the west side of 127 and what is on the east side. 
And it turns out that it is, uh, I'm uh, almost tempted to do a show of hands, but um, the green area here is on the east side of Highway 127 is 64% of the city's population and 36% uh, in the purple on the west side. And part of the reason I bring this up is I was, I was curious to see this. I also noticed that five of the districted incumbents live on the west side and only one on the east side. So even though the majority of the, the population is in that, uh, that eastern half, the majority of the representatives on council, in fact, five out of six, uh, live on the west side. And the one that is not is, is in this area here, I believe, looks like about half a mile away um, from, from 127. So that, I don't bring this up as a critique, it's just a way of saying this, this is a, it made for an interesting constraint mm -hmm. in trying to make sure that uh, according to the, the guidelines that, that um, you all provided to us, drawing districts where each uh, council member in a, in a ward is able to stay in that ward and um, as a result that uh, it, it did impose some, some limits on what, what changes I could make um, and this is all about constraints and as, as Deborah and I has mentioned there's, there's a tension, there's a trade-off between you know, trying to satisfy this guideline as well as for example trying to keep things compact. So a lot of background, let's, let's start looking at the, uh, the draft plans uh, and I do want to take a moment just to remind folks about precincts and actually a, a lot of the the precincts that are currently divided these black lines are the are the precinct boundaries uh, you can see here for this this one in the middle has three different wards uh, in this precinct so on on election day if a voter um, goes to their their voting place um, for example uh, in in the primary um, it could be that folks who live in the same precinct and go to the same polling place are voting for three different uh, ward, ward races under this map. And as it, it's not a coincidence, I think, that a number of these split precincts, like this one here, um, there's, a, there's a council residence in this area here. There's a, this is split between the uh, Ward 5 and Ward 1, between the pink and the purple. Um, there is a... Uh, split in this precinct and that's where the, um, and I apologize, for some reason the software did not include a label for Ward 6 uh, on some maps, on some maps it did, on others it did not, but there, this uh, tan ward here is, is Ward 6. So one of the, one of the instructions was to try and, and resolve some of these precinct splits. Again, here's the existing and let's compare it to, to option A. So again, the uh, the, the sort of basic approach here is to try and bring the population of Ward 6 uh, lower while bringing the populations of Wards 1, 5, and 4 higher. So the, the place that I started here was in taking some of the eastern part of what is now Ward 6 and adding that to Ward 1. So the distinction on the screen is... Um, the, between the purple and the brown and the tan is a little hard to see, but on the printouts you have, I noticed that the printouts do show the, the, the purple and the brown show up more clearly. Um, and then as far as uh, bringing up the population of Ward 5, you can see here the, between Ward 5 and Ward 6 that a, a number of areas of Ward 6 uh, have been removed. Um, to go into Ward 5 and increase the population of Ward 5. Um, enough so, in fact, and because we wanted to bring the population of Ward 2 down a little bit, this area of uh, Ward 2 was actually brought into Ward 6. And then as far as raising the population of Ward 4, it's, it's pretty easy to make out if you compare, for example, this area here, which is currently Ward 5, would become part of Ward 4, and a little bit extra uh, in this area here. Um, also some changes here, um, some areas that are currently in Ward 3 going into Ward 4. And that's, that's an that's a overview, a summary of the changes in Option A. I know in your packets the staff assembled things in sort of a, there's an Option A uh, 
group and an option B group, but I'm going to keep going back and forth between option A and option B. And please ask questions um, while I'm going if, if, it, if it seems to make sense. So the, the process in option B was a slightly more of a, a two-step process. So instead of just extending, since uh, in the existing, as we mentioned, Ward 1 is sort of in the center and it's, it's landlocked, if you will. It's, it's surrounded by other wards. And we're, in option A, Ward 1 gets extended out and it's, it's not a terribly compact um, shape, but it seemed to, to be a, a reasonable shape. And when we see the precinct boundaries, that might help explain it as well. In option B, I tried to keep one more compact. And what that meant doing was sort of a, a two-step process uh, whereby um, you can see that Ward 1 extends into a part of what's currently Ward 3 here. And then Ward 3 then moves up along the eastern edge here. So instead of 1 extending to the edge, Ward 1 stays more compact, takes part of the, the northern, northwestern part of Ward 3, and then Ward 3 moves up into here. The changes in Ward 5, um, uh, between Ward 5 and Ward 6 and Ward 1, are a little more similar. That you, you will see 5 uh, ends up getting a little bit of this area here. Slightly different in terms of how uh, Ward 1 and Ward 2, uh, how that adjustment is made. Um, and also some changes in terms of the additions to Ward 4. Um, that included an area, uh, a longer um, sort of strip along the west side here that demographically was more similar to the existing makeup of Ward 4, and also a change in um, the, the shape of the, this part of Ward 3 that extends into Ward 4 is less compact but more demographically, this, this makes for more demographically similar um, populations in, um, in Ward 4 because Ward 4's population needed to be increased and uh, option B adds areas that are more demographically similar to Ward 4. Um, this is in keeping with the communities of interest guideline that we, we had spoken about. So from here on, um, the, a lot of this is just sort of additional explanation. This is a, another way of showing, uh, rather than seeing them side by side, I, I used to be a teacher and I know sometimes different people will, will uh, grasp things better from different explanations or different visuals. So this is another way of showing in a single map the changes. So the solid colors here represent, for example, let's look at Ward 4 in the yellow here. The, the solid yellow background indicates what's proposed for Ward 4 in option A, and the dots that you see are uh, what the existing, the color of the existing ward. I'm sorry, the, the wording here should say ward, not district. Um, but so this is an area that is currently in Ward 3, which is the dark orange. This is similarly currently in Ward 3. This is currently in uh, Ward 5. And so this may be a, a better way to see, um, for example, the, the areas that are brought out of Ward 6 into Ward 5. Um, I actually circle on the next slide this area here because on my screen, the, the purple and the tan are very hard to distinguish as they are on this screen, but this was true on my computer uh, in my office. But on the printout, I was able to look at the printouts and it's actually much more easy to see the, the distinction between the, the purple and the tan. Um, but this, uh, this can be helpful for sort of understanding where the changes are, are happening. And really, if you, if you look at this, um, the entire geographic area, there's not a whole lot that is going from, from one ward to another. Very similar map for option B. Uh, maybe it would be helpful, you've, you've got these printed out, to put this map of, uh, of option B and, and option A next to each other. And again, as I described before, there's some differences in what parts of what are currently Ward 3 go into Ward 4 in this area, in this area in particular. Um, the change in, in what, uh, what is added to Ward 1 and what is added to Ward 3 in this area. Um, 
this is, but it's essentially, this slide is just another way of showing what we were looking at in previous slides. <coughs> I did want to look at the, the precinct boundaries because that's one thing that we had, um, we had talked about as uh, one of the guidelines, one of the goals. And so because of the constraints I mentioned earlier, I, I was not able to make uh, any substantial changes here. Um, you'll see in, in the next one maybe a little bit more, but there were some of the changes, for example, uh, adding these areas here to Ward 4. There's not a lot of population here. It wasn't so significant for balancing the population. But right now, within this precinct, you've got both Ward 4 and Ward 3. And what this does is bring all of this into uh, Ward 4. There's a similar situation up here where right now this, this odd little piece out here is part, and I honestly don't even know if this has population, but this is currently part of Ward 2, uh, and this is part of Ward uh, 6. What I did was to bring all of the pieces that are in this precinct uh, into Ward 3. And um, there's actually, I, I will acknowledge, there's, this is a situation here where there's only, right now, this precinct is split, but there's only one, what's called a traversal, whereas in this case, actually, there are two traversals, two splits here. Um, and I believe there is one other place where what had been a split precinct is made whole, but I am not seeing it right now. Um, in option B, uh, I, a lot of those changes were kept the same. For example, this area here, making all of this into uh, Ward 4, all of this into Ward 3. Um, there is it's a little hard to make out. Um, this is still divided into three different um, this precinct is divided into three wards and uh, I, am, I thought this would be something that would flash out at me visually, but they're, they're, um, I, I do know that the, the, the amount of making precincts whole between the two options is not substantial. There's one that is visually escaping me. The, the, the puzzle solver in me is tempted to look at this until I find it, but um, suffice to say that efforts were made in both of these to, to try and, and have boundaries follow precincts. Uh, precinct boundaries where possible. It looks like the one furthest to the east, where in the original one, Ward 2 had a satellite, the furthest one to the right, and you made it brown, or Ward 3. On the, so that's now a one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, if, if uh, oh, here's, here it is. Okay, here's one example. Just, and it's, it's minor. It's not, it's not earth shattering. Um, this is, uh, um, we could look up what this, this precinct boundary follows a major road, and right now it is divided into the current situation has this in three different, this precinct is in three different wards. This would make it just be in, in Ward 3 and Ward 6, and the little bit here that's currently in Ward 2 would become part of Ward 6. Um, thank you, City Manager. Uh, in terms of statistics, um, there aren't any enormous differences between option A and option B. Again, it's, it's helpful to look at the, these are the statistics for the current plan. Um, you can see, as we talked about before, there are four, this is, this is the key column as far as uh, the, the legal requirement to get the populations in balance. And I realize this slide may be hard to read for folks in, in the audience, but there is a, a printout. Um, so all of these are, are not only within uh, plus or minus 5%, but uh, with the exception of Ward 2 um, here, which is, is deliberately made low. It's actually made low in both of these. This is that what Deborah was talking about, sort of anticipating future growth and setting the, the population a little lower in an area like Ward 2 where there's expected to be annexation and more uh, residential development. So that's why... Um, here, Ward 2's population is negative 3.5% roughly, and here uh, about 4.1%. Just, 
just again, so when that growth comes in, the, the, the wards will stay more or less in balance. Um, but we did try to stay away from the extremes, so nothing that's 4.9, uh, either plus or minus 4.9. Um, there is a little note here about how these are in draft form and subject to small changes. There's, there are a couple things that the Census Bureau's re uh, reporting of what this, the city of Hickory's boundaries were is based on a snapshot from early 2020, and there have been annexations since then, and there are some other minor annexations that the Census Bureau did not account for. This is usually, it, it's, it does not amount to more than a couple dozen people, but there will likely be some small changes. There's also one example of a split block. Um, so this is, this is a one census block, and the census blocks are sort of the, the smallest puzzle piece, if you will, in this puzzle. Um, and in 2011, this must have been reported as, and um, maybe someone who's closer to the screen can, can read this, or I can. Um, so, this is 10th Avenue Place Northwest, uh, 8th Street Northwest, 14th Avenue. I apologize. Again, on my screen, it was possible to read the, the print through the green, but. Steve, uh, Steve, do you know where that is? It should be Lakeland Park. Lakeland Park, okay. Or just before, I mean, they're uh, kind of off of Geiger Road back up in there. That's quite mm -hmm. a deal. Okay. And so what this, this situation, this is a, a minor, uh, let's see, the, the, the population of this split block is 82 people. And so in the previous census, what they, I guess this, these roads that don't actually connect, they, they considered it a connecting road and created a block here and a block here. And so those blocks ended up in different wards. Now we've only got that as a single block we know there are 79 people, I'm sorry, 82 people. We don't know if that's 41 on each side or you know, 70 on one side and 12 on the other. So we need to make this one whole. So even if this is not uh, an area that would otherwise be being proposed for change, there would be these, uh, this kind of correction. Um, and again, this is the only example I had found. So. It's a, it's a minor change, but, and this, this mostly has to do with reporting the population of the current wards, because we don't know exactly what the population of this ward is or this ward is, because we don't know how many people are on each side. So um, that is the end of my presentation. I am happy to entertain questions or discussion. Um, the, your staff member here is also has the ability to bring up the interactive map of the current wards, uh, I will be providing an interactive online map um, of these draft plans. I don't have one of those ready yet, but in the, in the coming days I will. Um, in the meantime, if it's helpful to say, I, I wanna have a better understanding what this, this area, you know, near the, the western tip of um, Ward 6 or something is, um, we can bring it up on the interactive map um, on this computer here and show it on the screen. Mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful to have a um, zero in on what streets and have someone that can identify what areas of, um, that we're moving. Sure. Because it's a little mm -hmm. hard to look at dots in an area and not know exactly where it is. I understand, on, a, on an eight and a half by 11 map. Um, and if your Ward 6, if we could bring up that, this is, I believe in the Chrome, uh, tab there uh, in the taskbar, if that, that Chrome that is already got. So essentially the, the, the areas um, that are different in, in Ward 6, most of the changes to Ward 6 uh, are either um, in so that's zooming out. We, if we, we're going to want to zoom in, so there's some changes in and if it would be helpful, I'm, I, I can also steer that um, there's a there's a there we go 
So the scroll wheel is, is so. Um, zoom, zoom, in, zoom in a little bit more. There's that city ward map, is the, yeah. <clears throat> the interactive, yeah. the interactive will allow you to mm -hmm. zoom in. Possible. There's there's this uh, button up here, which is the for the. I wonder if what I'm if it's is it possible that yeah, what I'm clicking limited. is affecting the uh, the browser? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I, so it's is it treating that as a mouse click? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I I, uh, I was just trying to use the laser pointer, but evidently using the laser pointer. Do you mind if I steer? Is that? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Um, I will. I don't see any 12 year olds in there. <clears throat> That's what I would get. Just give us the information, send it to us. The uh, other features on the map were displaying nicely, but for whatever reason, the, mm -hmm. uh, the ward layers, even though they're appearing here, are not. So um, we can get, we'll get you that mm -hmm. information. And I, um, you just think if mm. I'm trying to think if there's another way um, yeah. hmm. I don't think this that this yeah, there, we there, huh. it is. there it is Um, this is one area 
where ward in under option A, ward one would be extending out into this area here. So this is 19th Avenue Drive Northeast, 19th Avenue Circle Northeast, 22nd Avenue Northeast. This um, the boundary here is 15th Avenue Northeast. So under option A, um, portions of this would become part of Ward 1. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, the other major changes in Ward 6, um, as I recall, uh, the incumbent's home is in this area here. Does that sound right? 14th Avenue Northwest. So that, that was maintained, but some of the area in this, uh, I guess, Umont is what it looks like according to this map. 13th Avenue Northwest, 13th Avenue Place Northwest, mm -hmm. as well as some areas here around, I think, getting up into the, the country club. Here, I might need to, to uh, look at the shape. Thank you, Deborah. Um, Yes, so this, uh, the country club area would be part of Ward 5, and this boundary, I believe, would, would follow 2nd Street Northwest. Um, and those are the significant areas that would be taken out of Ward 6. The area that would be added to Ward 6 is uh, north of here, so up in this part of Ward 2. Um, that looks like Sunset Hills. Okay. I, I, uh, I believe that's right. Is that 33rd Avenue? 35th Avenue Northwest. Oh, yes. Yes. That's Avenue Sunset Hills. Hill. Yeah. Um, so that's, that is the, um, the portion that would be coming out of Ward 2 and being added to Ward 6 in option A. Um, would you like me to show what the, the changes to Ward 1 would look like in option B? Sure. Um, so in option B, the areas uh, mm -hmm. that we were looking at a moment ago, um, well, let me, let me just start with this area. So uh, there's a little bit less of this area here that would become part of Ward 6, but still uh, a, a little bit of this. This is a, a census block, I believe, following uh, 4th Street Boulevard, Northwest. So given our criteria that we've ranked and approved, I'm thinking 2 and 6 have the highest growth. So what's the benefit of exchanging the populations there. So two only shares a boundary with six. Exactly. So if we're going to bring two's population down. But uh, six is high, so they had to I take, know you can't do any. You had to take from that. six on the south side. Um, oh, so it's so the, just they only have one place to I only have one place to balance that deduction out, which oh. is on uh, the, the two, only way to bring two's population down is to, is add, to add something to six. And then because six was the highest, there are other areas that we that you'd have to take from six. Six okay. are going into three. Yes, it's sort of a, a multi-step yeah. logic. But there's um, you move one piece it takes there's I guess I have a question about um, the whole rationale because A and B to me it's similar. I mean you have your rationales and everything. Using the criteria, how does that actually, and I know some of it is just proximity and what you just showed. If we're gonna look at racial disparity and different things, you know, the criteria, how can we balance that more through either option A or option B? It doesn't really create any change. Not significant. There were, I, I um, could I guess be a little more specific on the question? Are, are you saying that there would have been changes between Ward Two and Ward Six? That no, not so much there, but sense. just different. You know, actually, I'm looking at A and B. Which one more significantly, I guess, looks at certain criteria versus the other? They're they're about the same in terms of the racial breakdown. 
they're, yeah, they are quite similar. Um, as I mentioned, um, the, the demographic numbers for Ward uh, 4 are slightly different. It's, ward 4 is the one ward right now that has a, where the, the number of people who identify as only white is a minority. Mm -hmm. That's the one ward where fewer than 50% uh, self-identified as only, only white. They're, they're multiracial people. Um, and so war, uh, option B um, took that into consideration as trying to um, add areas because Ward 4's population was low, add areas that were consistent with that kind of demographic profile that's currently and, there, that um, communities of color. And Deborah, could you remind us what you can and can't consider in terms of race? drawing these boundaries so under the voting rights act what you can't do is use race to intentionally disadvantage any minority population voting strength you can't dilute it so that their voting strength is lowered in any particular district and you can't what's called sometimes called packing is is pack all minorities into one district so that they don't impact, they don't have the ability to impact um, races in um, elections in the, other, in the other wards. And so using race as an intentional you know, criteria is, I apologize, um, using race, race shouldn't be used as a pre predominant, predominant or primary criteria, except to the extent that you want to ensure that you are not diluting uh, racial voting strength. Um, if there's a cohesive minority population, you don't want to split that up so that they, they can't vote together to, um, to elect candidates of their choice. So we didn't take, and I say we, you know, Blake didn't take race affirmatively into account in s deciding, um, you know, where populations would go. We used the neutral criteria, except again to the extent that you have said certain communities of interest should be kept together and so he would um, use that if it, if it came between moving a piece here and a piece here, um, look at the communities of interest. D does that answer the question? Um, you know, there was no effort, and correct me if I'm wrong, to, to do any sort of racial balancing or anything like that. You know, District 4 had been you know, historically had a large uh, black population. It was um, kept that way so that that, you know, the percentage stayed approximately the same. Um, so those communities would have the same influence that they've had in the past. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No, I think that's, that's well, well said, well explained. Um, so it's and maybe a, another way of addressing your, your um, question, Councilmember Williams, is there's not sort of a um, across the board, you know, option A was more designed to favor compactness when I had to, you know, when there was tension between compactness and trying to put precincts together. And option B was more focused on precincts rather than compactness. There's not a, um, and sort of an overarching theme. Um, in fact, in Ward, um, Ward 1 ends up being more compact uh, in option B, but I think Ward, um, Ward 4 is actually more compact in option A. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is something too where you, mm -hmm. you can direct us to say, well, we think that the, the shape of Ward 4 or the way that Ward 4 is preferable in option A, but uh, the the you know the northern part of the city, that option B is preferable, and, and I can try to mm -hmm. um, you know reconcile something that's, that's um, a mix with with the caveat that once you start making larger changes, there are cascading effects. I will say so. This is the third one of these I've been through. This is by far yeah. the least amount of changes. Yeah. I mean they're, they're pretty consistent with with what currently exists if folks are fairly satisfied, particularly 
-hmm. option A. And I, and I did a visual exercise, I went back and forth toggling between one and A, and it, it seemed like A had even fewer changes than B did, geographic changes to the boundaries. Yeah. And that's, I, I mentioned in, in introducing option B that there, uh, in, in an effort to keep Ward 1 more compact and also sort of in the, its central, the, the sort of space that it currently occupies in the center and not having a presence on the eastern edge of the, uh, the city limits. Um, what that meant doing is actually making two, a, a sequence of changes. Mm -hmm. So actually um, that change into um, taking some of Ward 3 here in this area, this is the Thawing Creek, um, 14th Avenue Northeast. So in, in option B, Ward 1 moves down into this area here, and then Ward 3 moves up into this area here, taking some of the population from Ward 6, mm -hmm. that in option A actually goes into Ward 1. Mm -hmm. So the, it, like, like the city manager said, it's actually, it took more changes to keep Ward 1 compact. As an um, and, and keep Ward three on the Ward three and Ward six being the, the um, uh, Ward three, Ward six, and Ward two is sort of the, the wards that have a presence on the eastern mm -hmm. edge of the uh, city boundary. Can everyone hear me up here without a mic? Mm -hmm. By the way. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Take this off. Um, so. Uh, would the council member from Ward 6 like me to go through what the changes were in Ward 6 um, in option B? Sure. As a, so um, the most significant thing is what I was just talking about. That there's, there's still this area here that comes out of Ward 6, but instead of it going into Ward 1, it's going into Ward 3. And that's a little harder, it's interesting, it's, it's a little bit harder to see on the printed map. Um, I wonder if it might be clearer in this map here. Sorry. In shift F5, there we go. Um, so this is that area. Um, that is going uh, into Ward 3, that in option A is going into Ward 1. And if we, uh, again, this is the area, uh, that's 19th Avenue Drive Northeast, 19th Avenue Circle Northeast, and your, this, your place is pretty easy this to area here. Yeah. Um, and then on the, on the western side of Ward 1, I know where the changes are. I just don't know where some uh, of this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about this a little bit. Um, <coughs> still pretty similar Sorry, around yeah, the Country so Club and this, this Viewmont yeah. area. Those changes are pretty similar, but there is a little bit uh, of a difference in the shape of the area that is switched from Ward 6 into Ward, uh, sorry, from Ward 2 into Ward 6. Ward 6 grows up. Uh, more along this this area, um, it's a slightly less compact shape, but I think one that um, there was, was an effort to follow the, the, the larger roads. Yeah. Any other folks who would like me to, to sort of zoom in on a part of town and explain where where the changes? Um, are, are applicable? Sure. Yeah. I'll work for Ward 4. Okay. So, Ward 4, again, uh, has in its current uh, population numbers are, are low. Let me just, since I've got in the habit of toggling here, just a reminder, I believe, uh, Ward 4 and Ward 1 are about the same. So needing um, 
somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 800 people to, to get to the appropriate population level. So what was added in, in option A to Ward 4 is this area here. So basically up to Main Avenue Northwest, I think, uh, there's this little notch that was already there. Um, and I think that actually might be based on a precinct boundary, as I recall. Um, I kept that, and then essentially, I believe it follows uh, Main Avenue Northwest and then jogs up a little bit here. So that would be added into Ward 4. Um, I think there is one block here <coughs> that would be added into Ward 4. And then this, this uh, what is currently ends here at uh, Ninth Avenue Place Northeast is sort of resolved into a triangle. So that this, this boundary <coughs> follows 10th Street Northeast and 8th Street Northeast, and this, this becomes a, a triangle here. Um, and so that, that, the other pieces that were being added to uh, Ward 4 were coming out of either Ward 5 or Ward 3, and this would be coming out of Ward 3 as well here. Um, the other minor change in option A and option B um, is that uh, these parcels here, or these, uh, these census blocks, I should say, these parts of Ward 3 would become part of Ward 4. There's not a lot of population there, as I recall, but um, it was an effort to, to make all of the area in this precinct be in the same ward. And then Ward 4 is in option B. The changes are um, a little, uh, they're in the same areas, but with kind of different shapes. So instead of this little part of uh, Ward 3 going into Ward 4, it's more of a, a larger block in here, which had a, a <coughs> more substantial population. And then actually a little part of Ward 4 would become part of Ward 3 to provide the connection to the incumbent's residence here. Um, again, that makes for a less compact shape. Uh, that same triangle would be added both in, in option B as well as option A. And then over here, instead of filling in this whole area up to uh, Main Avenue Northwest, the, the boundary of Ward 4 would include an area that sort of hugs this, um, this western edge along the, the corporate limits of the city um, near Longview. Uh, and I think that pretty much covers it for changes to Ward 4. Thank you. Why the effort to keep the wards fitting into the precincts? Do the precinct lines have to be redrawn at census all the time, too? The uh, <coughs> precinct boundaries are drawn quite rarely, uh, and that is a, is a more involved process. There, there are three main reasons. One argument is voter confusion, which I alluded to earlier, when you've got people who are showing up to vote at the same polling place and they're, you know, wait, you know, you're voting for Councilmember Seaver. I, I'm pretty sure I'm voting for Councilmember Williams, or two Councilmember Williams, this Councilmember Williams. Uh, yes, Ward, I don't think Ward 3, anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um, so voter confusion, just having uh, the um, principle of people voting in the same place, having the same representatives. Um, another principle is that from an election administration standpoint, and this gets into the weeds a little bit of how the database is, is operated and maintained, but um, the short of it is it's much easier for the boards of elections to maintain their records and their databases and make sure everybody is in the right place if um, it's based on precincts rather than having to follow streets or census blocks or other things that aren't already an integrated part of their database. Um, and then the, uh, there is a third argument, and maybe, oh, I know what it is. This, I think, is less of a concern here, but some people have made the argument, and it's a, a two-part argument. Um, if there are any concerns about a legal challenge for gerrymandering, 
if you built your whole map out of essentially whole precincts, it's much harder for someone to say, look, they, you know, they use surgical precision and carved this up into some strange shape. If you say, no, it's, this is built out of you know, uh, two and a half dozen precincts, it's harder to make an argument that this was done in some convoluted way if you're using larger building blocks. And then there's even a piece of that. Some mathematicians would argue that there's this, I, won't, I, could, I could go into the weeds of something called differential privacy and how the, if you're aggregating blocks into larger administrative units, um, you're less likely to have errors related to this thing called differential privacy or this disclosure avoidance system. That was a very long answer to your question, mm -hmm. but um, I will also say that some local governments choose not to pay attention to precincts at all. That's um, why I was wondering, why? Why do others not? Why would we want to? For the, so the reason that I just mentioned, right. um, I mean, so. but uh, other, other bodies don't find that compelling. Another reason, um, if, and I'll toggle back to the slides, um, if we go to the maps showing the precinct boundaries, these are actually relatively compact, honestly, compared to some of the ones in other parts of the state. Um, you know, I'm in, in Asheville, where there's the topography and rivers and things have, can have some very winding shapes. None of these is really, I mean, I guess this is kind of a, a wiggly boundary, um, but none of these is, is really oddly shaped. Uh, I can say, for example, in Iredell County, there are some precincts that have such wacky shapes that to try and uh, try and adhere to them would make for very obvious mm -hmm. districts. Um, um. But that's, it's, it's considered one of the traditional criteria. If, actually, if you look at the General Assembly's criteria that, that they're using for their redistricting process, they're uh, stipulating that precincts, they use the term voter tabulation districts, it's this, essentially the same thing, should not be split unless absolutely necessary. So it, it has been, historically considered a traditional best practice, but it's, it's not a legal requirement. And um, so I, I've tried to honor it to, uh, to an extent. And as I mentioned, um, you know, made some fixes around the edges here to make this whole, uh, make this one all be the, the same, all one ward in this precinct, have this, um, in the, in the case of option B, um, this precinct no longer has three awards. It's only got two, but it's still a precinct. Um, so uh, this is something I, I considered, but it was it was hardly something that I uh, made a, a primary objective. Mm -hmm. Can can you? Um, I probably have the least contiguous ward. You know. It, kind of jumps around and I'm still learning all the different pieces. Can you tell me what some of those little areas are that are going to be? Sure. And when you say that you have in War Two? War Two. Okay. Yeah. What, what some of those satellite annexations? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and War Three has a lot of, um, of satellite um, yeah. three. areas here, really or at least up. areas that like they've, built they've got mm -hmm. narrow connections. Mm -hmm. but yes, let's look at uh, this area up here. So this is the Lake Hickory Country Club? No, that's no, uh, Catawba Springs. Springs. But it's, it's, still, it's, it's a country club it, there. It's owned by Lake Hickory, but it's Catawba Springs. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm trusting the, the math <laughs> folks to know what they're talking yeah. about. Um, so thank you for the local knowledge here. The, the label there said that, but um, that's interesting how that, that kind of thing can happen. So uh, you understand mm -hmm. this large area. Mm -hmm. And then some of these others, I don't, I can't tell you uh, the name. But so Steve, st so would that be like Old Mill Landing area? No, no, no. I think so. What is what is? So, some so of if this you could zoom out, zoom out a little, Steve yeah. can tell you what some of those are. But those stay the same. Else, this is yeah, gorgeous. those stay the same. Those stay the I same, and, and either one of them. Which which ones are leaving? Oh, so the only changes. Yeah, you just have. The only changes really in Ward 2, uh, in either plan, that are, I mean, I mentioned this, there's that one um, parcel yeah, that little here, I believe. So there's that, that's, that's one that would change. Um, 
that should that should in both, in both, I think both that was the it. options. The other area where Ward 2 is uh, proposed to be changed is in this area here, but no no other side. That's Sunset Hills. You lose this is some of Sunset Hills. The 30, what are the streets? Can you is that, is that? Uh, Sunset Hills would be what, 35th? Sunset. Yeah, but all that back in there is. Okay. We, we will get everybody the, the big maps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That would be See. helpful. And I, uh, just quickly this afternoon, I looked at, I took your planning board member appointments because those are by war mm -hmm. except for the at large. Mm -hmm. And it looked as if in, in, in the first option, option A, that everybody is still within the ward that they were appointed by. I, had, I didn't get a chance to look at B yet. How does this play into the different um, redistricting of the state level and congressional districts? The, the, the short answer is there's, there's no. really very little connection. So okay. Maybe the attorney would be able to give a yeah. better answer. And no, um, every, as I talked about um, before, you all are responsible for redistricting the city of Hickory. Um, the General Assembly is responsible for redistricting the state. So every entity is responsible for its redistricting and there really isn't unless you were to consider that an important priority um, you know there's a constitutional provision that talks about the whole county provision um, at the state level but you know it they're not a coordinated effort um, there is the possibility that should the general assembly choose they do have the ability to uh, declare what the districts would be for local governments. Um, that doesn't yes. happen often, no. but uh, there, are, there are certainly cases where that has happened. So mm -hmm. that, that would be one case where the General Assembly could have involvement. Mm -hmm. But again, it's still a separate process from the congressional and, and state legislative. Right. There are um, school boards and, um, and counties and cities across the state where the General Assembly has reached down and said, these are your districts. Um, and sometimes they give a procedure when those districts can be changed, and sometimes it just then you know, forever after this law, this local act is is established, then you have you go through the same process at the next census. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions related to the uh, maps? So I, the question I'd have is, what are our next steps? I well, guess we'll get you. We'll get you more detailed information so you can dig down into the street level. Mm -hmm. And I think before you, we see that, it's probably not a good idea to talk about options. Um, right. So I guess more more so than picking. I mean, obviously, we're not going to pick an option tonight. I guess what what's our next step? Right. We'll get looking you at that, that information. Yeah. Is okay. This, so and then ultimately, I'm going to make a recommendation that y'all can. You know, do whatever you want to with it, but it's, there's going to be a public hearing on the whole. Right. And just to go back and remind you all of, of the process that I talked about at the first meeting, um, <coughs> so you have a deadline of November 17th to provide those, um, your plan, your established plan, uh, adopted plan to the, um, to the Board of Elections. If you don't think you can meet that, it can be pushed to December 17th. So there was local legislation passed this year. Um, or not local, there was a special legislation passed to make sure that cities had time to redistrict. So it gave you sort of two deadlines that would push back filing, et cetera. So if you, by November 12th, you think that you are not going to be able to meet that November 17th deadline, you would need to inform the Board of Elections so they can have that next uh, December 17th date. Um, but the next step is, is again to have a public hearing and then to adopt a resolution um, approve a resolution adopting your new maps. Um, and if there are, um, you know, if there are changes that the council desires between now and, um, you know, the final adoption, if something comes up at the public hearing and, and there's a desire on the part of uh, the council to, to see a different alternative or see one of these with some slight adjustments made, um, that's a possibility as well. Your time is sort of getting short. Uh, but there's certainly 
time to make changes if it's desired. Yeah. Will you be presenting at the public hearing? Will you be present? So I can certainly be present at the public hearing if that's what the, um, the council would I think would like. regardless whoever presents, I think we, the maps need to be uh, much clearer, you know, given the confusion with Hickory Streets anyway, I think anybody in, you know, that's attending the public hearing, we need to have, we need to have it highlighted and, and very apparent where these, where these boundaries are. And, uh, you know, we're a landmark town, you yeah. know, we go by landmarks. Yeah. So, so I will, um, I will, uh, Blake can pipe up if I'm speaking, over speaking for him, but he will um, be able to produce an interactive map like the one that's on your website for the, the alternatives that can be published in advance of the public hearing so that citizens who are interested can zoom in and look and see where those boundaries are, lines are. And so you can go from one plan to the next plan you can look at plans on top of each other and, and do that kind of comparison. Um, that it is cumbersome to do with paper maps and, and, mm -hmm. and an online system when everyone's, you know, someone's saying, no, move it over there. And, you know, so that it's just challenging. Um, but certainly that's something that Blake can yeah, prepare. We, if there are no changes from these two alternatives that, that you all want to see, um, he can put those maps together. And then both you and the public can have a chance to look at them and have questions formulated before the public hearing. Yeah, we won't advertise for the public hearing unless we've got all that ready for people to look at. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you so much. Any other any, questions? Any other questions? Do you have anything Thank else? You. Okay. Right. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. All right. If there's no further questions, I'll make a motion to adjourn this uh, special meeting concerning redistricting. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. All right, we stand adjourned.